Uh, can I ask you which uh, channel you guys are? Channel 11. So channel 11. Fuck, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm resident. I was just curious. I'm just down here for, uh, for ourselves. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
three to four months to the city, possibly six months or more. And with that, um, we're all excited about the City of Champions Revitalization Initiative. I'm sure all of you have many, many questions. And I ask that you please hold all of your questions until the presentation has ended. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the project manager, Gerard McCallum, who will be our guest speaker this, after, this evening. I still think it's daylight. Gerard, again, thank you for coming out. Well, thank you uh, for having me out. Uh, I was very pleased when I got the uh, request to come out and uh, speak. Uh, we're doing these all over the city of Inglewood. So this is about our Can you speak seven. Speak up, please. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. What I'll do is I'll come up a little bit. Right. <laughs> this is working. Um, so we've been, you know, first of all, I want to thank you for coming out and uh, inviting me um, to uh, your your your, uh, your meeting. Uh, we have done. Yes. Uh, uh, we have done. We have done quite a few of these uh, since our announcement uh, last week, and we're going to continue to do these. And so, if you have block clubs or meetings that you would like for us to attend and explain what we're doing, we'd be more than happy to attend this. Again, this is really about getting information out and then ultimately at the end of the day, you and the voters decide uh, whether or not this is going to be possible in the city of England. So I'm going to go through uh, the presentation. I think some of you have got a chance to see some of our boards. These were the latest renderings. This is actually a work in progress um, and we'll be continuing to add more uh, uh, renderings as we get more uh, further down into the design. But let me just go over uh, uh, the presentation as we talk now. Mr. McCollum, before you start, you said you're going to be doing these all over the city. How are we going to know where you're going to be next? A lot of these people didn't even know tonight that we're going to happen here. So how are we going to know where you're going to be talking at so that we can all be there to hear? Well, so if you want to meet, you can contact our offices or the campaign offices very end of the slide, I'll give you my telephone number and email. So if you want a meeting for your group, that's not what I said. let me finish, let me finish. <laughs> if you want a meeting for your group, your block club, your HOA, your club, call me and I'll have those meetings, okay? That's how we're actually, we are being invited to the meetings that people have existing with their various block clubs or so if a block club like this was a um, Bob captain's meeting, they asked me to come. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce asked me to come. Uh, there are several churches that are asking me to come. And that's how we're, 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 we're responding to the meetings that you're having. If you want to know uh, the schedule, you can contact the campaign office, and I'll put that information up on the, the presentation. You can call me and I'll be able to tell you where the next meeting is that's open to. If the group allows it, we're more than happy to speak. Could they possibly come on the internet? Um, we can see about putting some of them on the internet, but again, we're being invited, so if, if they give us a say, make it a general public meeting, it's fine. Some of these meetings have been with three people in the living room, and I don't know if they want this group showing up to, to the three people in the living room, but we'll, we'll get as much information out there as possible. Okay. There are also uh, some town hall meetings that are coming up uh, by the city council people, and we've been invited to those town hall meetings, and those actually go out as email blasts as well. So. Um, you know, we're making ourselves completely available. Again, if you want us to come out and speak to your group, we're more than happy to. Okay? Yes, and so with the sign in sheet in the back, they will continue to email you any updates about the campaign, any uh, emails about open meetings or general public open meetings as well. Okay? All right, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so. As many of you know, we, we purchased the land back in 2005. And I've been before many of you since 2006 as we went through the titling the Hollywood Park uh, racetrack. And at that time, what we purchased was 238 acres. There was always an existing 60 acres that uh, we never controlled and, and didn't own. And that's the part in which we went through a long entitlement process that took over three, over three years to do. 
Uh, as you know, uh, the wonderful thing about this site, we're looking about the single city of Inglewood, is its proximity to the county. It is really, literally, dab smack in the middle of the county, uh, with three freeways that are accessible to the site. And it's always historically had large capacity uh, to be able to translate everything from you know, the horse racing in its heyday that we used to have up to 80,000 people coming to the horse racing. At the same, same time, we had Lakers and Kings playoffs. So as we were saying, this was the original 238 acres that we owned. This 60 acres, which sits right next to the floor, as many of you know, was acquired earlier part of this year, in February this uh, year, by a, a group called the Kroenke Group. And as many of you probably have read the newspaper, the Kroenke Group is a developer uh, primarily, and he also owns teams, a number of different teams, the Avalanche, the Denver Nuggets, the Rams, you can go down the list of the Avalanche, and he also owns a number of sports and entertainment venues. Some of those venues house his teams, and some of those venues house other teams. Uh, but one of the things that's known about the Kroenke Group is that their primary uh, the, their, their primary business is the development of real estate and commercial properties. The Kroenke Group is the ninth largest landowner in the United States. Excuse me. There are two instead of those. They can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry. Big boy. Big boy. Big boy. And so the Kroenke Group is the ninth largest commercial and real estate developers in the country. So after they um, purchased the land, uh, we had a conversation with them about actually joint developing the land so that there was some cohesion in terms of what was developed on the property. And as a result of that, what you see before you today is actually the proposal as a sports and entertainment district to the Hollywood Park Tomorrow Project, as it was, as it was formerly known. <coughs> Step back a minute so I can just kind of point some things out to you, then I'll come back so I can make sure I get the back area here. What you saw before was primarily a retail district in the former Hollywood Park development plan. The casino was being relocated over to Mississippi Boulevard, and the residential areas is recalled with throughout the entire back area along the site. There was a lake in the middle that was going to be called Lake Park. So we had uh, parks that we described to you before in the past. We had Champion Park, Arroyo Park, Bluff Park, primarily because it sits along the 11th, 11th Avenue uh, community up there along the Bluff, and then Lake Park. What has changed in the program is that we've added a sports and entertainment district, which consists of a stadium that seats up to 80,000. Uh, uh, I can't hear you. Not at okay. All. You know, we might have to do this in two meetings. Uh, we've got a stadium that sits 80,000 people, uh, a, sports and inter a, a, a um, performance arts venue that would seat up to 6,000 people, and then office that's associated with that district. The new site, again, 80,000 seats that it would be entitled for, 6,000 seat performance venue, up to 2,500 residents, which are down from the 2,995 that we were entitled for. Up to 890,000 square feet of retail. We were before right over 600,000. We feel now with this uh, sports and entertainment <coughs> complex, we could be a little bit more robust in our retail center. And that's about the size of the Grove, Third Street Promenade, just to give you some idea in terms of perspective of that. And it's designed in many instances like that open air, uh, where you can walk in and you're not inside of a mall, but you're actually outside. Up to 780,000 square feet of office. This is probably the best part of the project to me because outside of, you know, a few game days, this is where the long-term sustainable jobs actually come is with, re with, with, with commercial office space. A 300-room hotel, that's same as it was before in the <coughs> project. And then 25 acres of neighborhood parks that would be dedicated to the public for public use. And then the four acre civic site, which has already been donated to the city, and the city would determine what that civic use would be for. <coughs> uh, the economics of the project. 100% of the project will be privately funded. 
uh, there will be no tax revenues used to fund the building and construction of this site. Only after the site has generated an annual revenue of $25 million to the city will reimbursements be sought for only the par portion that's, re uh, that's uh, being built for the public. That's things like the public park space. That's things like the public infrastructure, sewer lines, and public streets. Nothing else that actually can be applied for or reimbursed. So nothing related to the stadium or any of the pri pri uh, private uh, um, portions of the property are eligible for reimbursement. So what does that mean, actually? So once the city has made $25, $25 million in revenues, uh, does that actually start to kick in? Anything below that, there is actually nothing that kicks in at that point. So $25 million, does anybody know what the current general fund of the city is? <laughs> I know we pay the highest taxes yes. of any of the cities around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the general fund is about $86 million. <coughs> so an additional $25 million would, ha would, be, would go to the city before actually that reimbursement would happen. So how much is the reimbursement? It, it actually, so the first portions of it would be relating to the infrastructure. So whatever that cost would, would be. What do you then, project? Right now, we project it to be somewhere between 50 to 60 million dollars in, in uh, public infrastructure dedicated to the public. Normally, the cities pay for that upfront or bond for it. This would be actually paid for by the developer directly. It would be at risk to the developer. So, if the stadium never generates 25 million dollars in general revenue to the city, there is no reimbursement. Isn't it 25 million dollars in a given year? Excuse me. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. We said we would ask questions at the end. Yes. Right. No disrespect to anyone in here. Please let the man finish. We're intelligent people here in this district. Okay. In the world. Okay. Let the man finish so we can get home and get to the other things. Great. Right. Take notes, please. Thank you. Great. No okay. disrespect to anyone. All right. Thank you. Okay. We're going to the Thank you, brother. Uh, uh, let's see. So this is my part in terms of construction jobs, tens of thousands of construction jobs will be generated. And then really the big part of it is actually the, the permit jobs on a long-term basis. So the permanent jobs are somewhere around 11,000 permanent jobs created after the entire complex is, building, uh, is built. That's uh, full and part-time jobs. That's jobs relating to the stadium, uh, everything from ushers, ticket takers, parking, all the way up to the office jobs that will be associated with the project as well. And then obviously the retail complex itself. Um, there is a local job hiring program. We have a 30% uh, hiring goal, uh, particularly for businesses relating to the construction. Minority and disadvantaged businesses are encouraged. We got a 30% hiring uh, criteria on that. We also have a 15% uh, apprentice, uh, local apprentice goal. So that's the idea to get people into uh, the programs, to get into the unions and whatever, to be a part of the the construction and we've been actually encouraging that uh, as you know the project is currently under construction and we've been encouraging that and, and we've partnered with the South Bay WIB and uh, the uh, Urban League as well to be able to provide some of that uh, pre-apprentice training um, and then we are going to be funding a million dollars in after-school program for the first five years of the program uh, these are the renderings that, that uh, basically you see on the site here. And to give you a description of that, this is actually looking on the interior, over the lake, over into the stadium in the background. That's the hotel in the front, uh, in the foreground there with the patio space. And then there's retail, uh, retail space uh, around it. Uh, this is actually looking back from a Royal Park down into the stadium. And you're seeing basically some of the uh, condominiums and, and uh, uh, the parts that actually are lining the back of <coughs> that stadium. Uh, by the way, that stadium is designed by HKS. It's the same folks that designed uh, um, AT&T, where Dallas is playing now. Um, the, the new stadium that uh, Minnesota is, is uh, about to <coughs> get, go into. And they're, they're very well known. They're, they actually build very iconic stadiums, including, if you remember, the Olympics a few years ago. Uh, some of those most iconic uh, uh, stages were built for that. So this idea of what architecturally is that, we plan for people to just, uh, for this to be just a, a world-class stadium that people will just come to visit just the architecture itself because it's going to be divine, designed to that level. Uh, this right here is actually Bluff Park uh, towards the, uh, you know, where you, where 
you look down into right now into the practice track, that's actually looking down into the Bluff Park area. And you see the uh, stadium into the, the background there. One of the things that we're doing so that the stadium is not a big hunking structure is that we're actually uh, sinking the, 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 the structure into the ground um, about 100 feet uh, so that it actually has a lower profile as opposed to being really over, over, overwhelming and overbearing. Um, this actually, I think this is going to be uh, the thing that we, in talking to the folks at the Renaissance area, you know, they, they have this gate that ends in nowhere, and we're putting a road that runs right along that side of the road, right alongside their property there, that will give them access actually outside that gate to that road, and that way they can ask, at, exit anywhere within the complex. So if they want to go shopping or they want to go up to Big K, they have that also as an option as well. So we've kind of addressed that issue that I think has been an historic issue for those property owners in the back area there. Um, and then you can see there's actually a 200 foot buffer uh, between their property and the stadium so that we create enough distance and enough throw away from the stadium so that it can right on the property from the area. So that's the end of my presentation. That's it in a nutshell. So what we're asking to do is basically amend the existing specific plan uh, and the development agreement so that it would allow for us to, um, I don't think that's a, that's, I think that's just a mic for the, the channel, right? Um, that would allow the addition of the sports and entertainment complex. And that's the part in which we're asking uh, for you to, uh, I think this is the fourth station, I'm actually speaking to the people, so we're going to take that off here. Um, and so that's what the initiative is, is to do. At the end of the day, we're trying to get this actually to go before uh, before the people. So that's what the petitions are out there. That's why you see the petition drives out there. And uh, I'll be available for any questions you have. OK? Um, I remember when we approved for the casino, we were supposed to have the 16,000 people there. It never, never happened. I remember when the UL stayed at 80,000 for Hollywood Park. It used to be about, I moved to Inglewood in 71. Okay. It used to be about 40, 50,000 miles. In the 80s, you couldn't get out of Inglewood with that traffic. Mm -hmm. You go down Central Boulevard right now, you can't get through there. Right. Like nothing. This Renaissance Housing Authority, housing community wasn't there before. Now they're there. Uh, we just, it seemed like we get. Inwood does not accommodate, in my opinion, does not accommodate this type of situation. And you're going a horse by the tail and say, you want to build this? Last time we paid 35000 for the blueprint for a stadium over here in Hollywood, over in Hollywood Park. We had the city of Inwood had to pay 35000 every trip. Because we went out of here, what we're going to do is get a team. We're doing it now. And you build a stadium, you ain't no team committed. But they don't generate no revenue there. Right. That's the thing. I mean, seem like you guys not doing enough research first before you commit yourself to doing this to this side city. Yeah, like I said earlier, the developer, uh, the front group, owns the and uh, throughout the country. And this is what they do. And they have a business model that supports. Uh, what we're trying to do. And if you look on now on, on online, they would tell you all these stadiums, uh, the Vikings, uh, New York Jets, Giants, 60% of those, those finances were paid by, private, by, by the city money, not by private. Only 40% was private. And I don't know how we're going to come in here and, and we're going to pay, we're not going to pay anything. It just don't make sense. That's one thing you entice the teams here, the owners here. By giving them so much. Excuse, away. You don't excuse, that. excuse me. Yeah, so let, 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 I, I let him speak. Okay. Yes. This he is a private, you know, this is a private development, privately funded, fully capitalized, and ready to go. We would like to start construction at the end of the year. And so this is not asking for city money. This is not asking for you to bond any money. This is not asking for you to pay for the plan. We've already paid for the plan. We've got a team of people working on this, and we're ready to go. All we're asking is for you to know whether or not we can do it. Yes. Let me say this. I, I appreciate what you said. I've been living in this city. My family's been here over 70 years. And I've heard so many things over the past years about what we don't have, what we don't have. I've seen a tremendous turnaround in our beautiful city here in Inglewood. 
I'm out there on the streets every day. I transport medical transport business in this city. And I'm gonna tell you something. This city is looking forward. We want you to take the breath you need to take. Stop letting the defensive people try to turn our ideas away. This is for our city. We have to pay some money. If you go to Disney, the community has to pay taxes. If you go to Sitinella Park, we have to pay taxes for the community to come in. I look at it like this. If we can make $100 and have to spend $2 or $3 in taxes, it's worth our city. I seen a young, a, a lady, elderly lady today at Bonds signing on the registration. And she was doing it for her grandchildren. Because what has happened to our city, my era, what prior administration has ripped our city off, from the seniors to the young people. What you're doing is for our future. And I'm with you 100%. And anyone that's in this city from District 1, 2, 3, and 4 that come at you with any negative, they're not for our city. So please, just take your time. Don't let any negative set you off. I appreciate that. You know, we're going to move forward with this. I Thank think you. it's a great, a great proposal for the city. And again, we're not looking for a contribution of land. We own the land. We're not looking for a dollar to start any of the construction. We will actually front all that. We'll front all the public infrastructure. We are uh, a conscious group at Stockbridge Capital Partners and the developer is Hollywood Park Land Company. Is there enough parking with all the structures in the yes. Because right now we don't have enough parking. Yes, so with Hollywood Park, just between the land between Hollywood Park and really within a 1.5 mile uh, uh, radius of the site, there's over 44,000 parking spaces that exist now. Are you taking any of the residents or anything? We're not taking any Find residents anything? away, no. We're, we, we have almost 300 acres. 300 acres, you could sit the Boston Financial System, uh, District twice in there. You can sit Vice Vatican City. It's a huge piece of property. And I always tell people, I think the only people that know it's actually that large are the 11th Avenue because they looked over the entire uh, parcels of the property. There was a track and a practice track and, and you know, enough for 1,700 horses that were housed in the back area and 5,000, uh, you know, groomsmen and everything lived, lived on the back portions of the track before you even get to the pavilion, before you even got to the parking spot. And one more thing, are you gonna pay Century Boulevard? Century Boulevard, so we're widening Century Boulevard and widening portions of Prairie to accommodate what we're doing. We're also uh, enhancing the intelligent traffic system so that it accommodates the traffic and it actually slows the traffic a lot better. There's a traffic and mitigation plan that's being pro proposed with the project as well. Uh, so a lot of that's going to happen. But from what I understand, and that's where your council person can probably address, I understand they're actually doing Century Boulevard sometime next year, I believe it is, right. or this year. The money has been released. Yes, and so they're doing Century Boulevard from Van Ness to uh, the 405 freeway, yes, right? So that's a... Uh, and then the negotiated nothing regarding property taxes, sales tax, that's, that's a city thing. That's, that's, you know, whatever the tax rate is, I think the city voted its own tax rate to, to pay a little bit more in tax rates. That was actually done by the citizens, and that has nothing to do with us. My, my question piggybacks off of what you were saying about the widening of the streets. 
now that you answered that, yeah. my question would be, when is that going to actually be implemented? When is it going to be done? Okay, we don't I have to sit on century. I, 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 know I, don't, I don't know the actual date if you contact me and the office, I'll find out for you. Okay. But as you know, if you go down the century, they've been doing a lot of infrastructure work, so they have to do that anyway. So uh, now I think most of it is done. And yeah. so now that you see, and the money, I think uh, what I was told has been released. So I can, if you call me in the office tomorrow, I'll find out the exact date of the yeah. um, yeah. um, Is there a proposal for um, park and ride type facilities <coughs> for people to get in and out? And how long do you predict it would be to like, empty the stadium? And, and put traffic back to normalcy, more or less, after a game. Right. So there is a shuttle program and a park and ride program as a part of our traffic mitigation program in uh, our proposal. Uh, in terms of the time to actually empty the stadium, I don't know that that information. Understand that this, you know, games are when Sunday in the evening. And so Sundays, it's actually, Mondays, and Thursdays. Right, but all, Mondays and Thursdays happen. <laughs> right, they, 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 they go around, so they don't, they don't they always come to the same place. But um, so the man will be at home. To keep it, keep and there's only, why not, you know, we, don't, we wouldn't run as often as like the forum does, because it's only, you know, 10, 10 games for, for, for a team. Question of that. Yes. Okay. Um, in terms of the Cronkey Group and um, what we're interested in is the fire diversity and doing business with the NFL. If a team comes uh, for local businesses, you did say something about yes. that. But prior to the project happening, how do we come to the table right now? Because we think we have something to offer. I totally agree with you. So right now, as you know, the project is actually under construction now. Hollywood Park tomorrow is actually under construction now. Mm -hmm. And we've done a number of job fairs that have been related to local <coughs> businesses. Right now, we're at a 43% uh, uh, local job hiring and, and minority hiring local basis. Our, our goal was 30%. We're over that percentage. When we did the casino renovation, we were at 63%. And so we have a very robust <coughs> outreach program that's going to continue with this. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, uh, representative that goes out and works with all the local agencies and then does the, the, the outreach. So we just did an outreach for the casino. That's, yeah, that's uh, primarily for construction. That's for construction, yes. 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 For, for other services, professional that's services, and, and, and training and products and things of that nature. So we're going to continue the training programs, especially relating to like the retail and populating the retail center. Yes. Uh, associate, you know, with that. Uh, but in terms of hiring goals, those are going to be actually dependent upon what businesses come in. If your businesses come in and you hire locally, that's great. You know, if you have a large department store, they have their own uh, local participation <coughs> goals, and we'll just adhere to those. Yeah. We can't force them to, to no. hire. That yeah. I get, but yeah. you, you you have a certain amount of sway in terms of how business is, is conducted. And that's right. just getting to the table so we can know how that process yes. rolls out. Yes. All of us aren't privileged. Yeah, we are actually and I'd like to be privileged. We're actually currently right now working with the <laughs> We're actually now working with the Chamber of Commerce to actually try to bring more businesses into what we're trying to do. Uh, we're keeping them abreast of what's kind of going on and to make sure that they're actually at the table. We have a goal to make sure that this stays local. The stadium portions in which uh, we would operate, we have a 35% uh, goal requirement. That's the parts in which we can control. And so if we don't get the 35%, that's just because there's not the people there. But that's our goal. That's our first preference. We can help you get, get the, the people, people there. there. That's, that's what we do. And we're working with the WIP also to make sure that that happens. Okay. Mr. McCall, yes, um, I wanted to ask again. <laughs> I wanted to ask again about the $25 million in a given year, according to Mayor Butts. Mm -hmm. But how is that money going to be made if the stadium is empty? Because according to the NFL, they're not going to be doing any team choosing for a couple of years. And they actually state that they're going to be uh, keeping markets. Uh,